But if if you conclude that it that it's a right, uh, do some have more rights than others, given given uh, the, the enormous cost of medicine uh, caring caring? In other words, uh, is there a Cadillac? Is a Ford Pinto <laughs> medical care? I hope Ford doesn't get offended by that. But, uh, the Pinto was a bad one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. What are your thoughts on you want to explain Pinto for all of us children? <laughs> uh, you know, I, uh, you can read the Constitution 12 ways from Luke's. You don't see any right to health care there. The trouble with deciding that it's a right, uh, it, it, as you very well know, if, if, if he has the right to health care, you have a duty as a doctor to deliver it to him. So you, there is no balance on that. Right to freedom of the press, thank God. But uh, and there, there really aren't any bounds to that except the obvious. You know, if they print a newspaper calling you a bunch of curse words, then, you know, that, that's beyond beyond the realm. But I think we have a problem making it a right. Uh, it, it, if it's a privilege, it, it is uh, certainly a privilege we would like to extend to most, if not all, Americans. And uh, I, I, I think, you know, I don't know that I can slip this. Yeah, so easily into one definition or the other, but I, I would say I, I don't think it's a basic fundamental right as some people are saying. Although if your government can afford it, it would be nice to have. So let's say it's a it, it's a necessary privilege that we would certainly love to extend to all Americans, or at least most Americans, those who want it. I I, I think we have. As, a, as elected officials, we have at least a duty to try and extend that as far as possible because we want people to be healthy and we want them to enjoy good lives. But, Do you uh, see there being uh, a basic package and then perks on top of that? As long as you define it, yes. Yes, absolutely. Unfortunately, 20 years ago when Hillary Care was making its way through the rounds, number one, they refused to de define it. Number two, as you well know, they were unable to define it because out of 100 people locked in that room making those decisions, there was not one medical doctor. The, the limit of their ability at the time to include people with actual medical knowledge in that room was a Nigerian medical student at Harvard who was on leave of absence, and he was on that committee. That stuck in my mind forever. So, you know, I think if we had people, people, it doesn't just have to be just doctors, but we need physicians. We need nurses. We need hospital administrators. We need people with 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 experience in healthcare delivery, not just a hundred lawyers in a room. When you come up with basic medical, okay, I've gone through it. What are those benefits, and where do they stop? So, yes, I think basic medical benefits are something we ought to be offering. What are they? How much are they going to cost? These are things we need to define, and then and then we can get consensus out of our country, and we won't we won't be going to the Supreme Court. Mr. Kriegel, for the August 14th election, it was a pretty crowded field in the Republican primary. How do you differentiate yourself from your opponents? Good question. Well, there are six of us, and, uh, and I would say uh, every one of them brings some strengths to the table, certainly. I mean, Gary Aldershaw has been in the legislature with me, and he has uh, experience in home building. Uh, uh, Chauncey Goss uh, has uh, some policy experience in Washington. Uh, Joe David Al uh, is an attorney, and I think you know the law is a, is a significant background for this. Um, Iron Donald is, a, is an excellent public speaker, and he certainly has a financial background. So, we, uh, and Trey Radel, you know, he's got uh, experience in public speaking and uh, a lot of experience in the internet. <laughs> so, uh, we all bring various <coughs> strengths to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, how do I differentiate? Well, I tell you what, I. Uh, let me go through it. To begin with, uh, I have eight years in the legislature. Only two of us have legislative experience, and I have more. I have my background in health care, a strong background in agriculture. And uh, I, I can tell you, you know, people have different experiences in the legislature. I've been there eight years. I've seen them all. Uh, one of the things I've learned and uh, I've learned to do and been able to do is to say no. Now, no, as a national policy, of course, is not a very proactive uh, stance to take. But what I mean by that is that uh, 
is that as you sit in the legislature year after year, you begin to see patterns. And uh, we've talked about this in the past, you and I. We have an overwhelmingly Republican legislature. But by overwhelming, I mean over two thirds. So uh, all the ideas which get traction and become anything uh, are Republican ideas. All the good ideas which get traction become something Republican ideas. Unfortunately, all the bad ideas which come down the pipe, grow legs, and start getting traction, they're, they're Republican ideas too. It's very difficult in a hierarchical system to dig your heels in and say, no, this is, this is bad for my district, this is bad for public policy, it's just bad in general. And I've done that. David, it doesn't win you any friends. But, you know, I, I didn't go to Tallahassee to enjoy the peer group there, although there's enormous peer pressure to conform. So uh, one thing always stuck in the back of my head uh, as a freshman who went in there, retiring speaker, took us in the, the freshman in the back room and gave us the talk, you know, and he had rambled on for 15 minutes. But uh, the one thing that stuck in my head was uh, when he said, you know, he was talking about your peers and your lobbyists. He said, if you want a true friend up here in Tallahassee, bring your dog. <laughs> How would you grade the Florida State Legislature, and how would you grade the uh, Congress? Uh, let's start with the legislature, with which I have experience. And give me some areas here. And, and budgeting. My kid gets a report card. She gets 12 different right. areas. So, I mean, if you look at in the budgeting areas, creation of jobs, health care, Medicare, those, and working together with both sides of the, the aisle. And do the same thing if you would for Congress. Okay. Uh, let's start with budgeting. Uh, we're very fortunate in Florida. We have a constitutional men who simply require a balanced budget. That being the case, we produce a balanced budget every year. And that leads to some real tough decisions. But at the end of the day, we have a budget which is not only balanced, but has, uh, what, uh, three quarters of a percent in there for, for squishiness and for, and for rainy days. So I'll give them an A-plus on that. If uh, nationwide, Every state, which a lot of states do, but obviously California and New York, no. <laughs> and look at the position they're in. But if every state did and the federal government did balance their budget, uh, we would not be looking at some of the issues we're looking at right now. So I give an A on that. Uh, let me move on. Uh, creating jobs? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure of the ability of government to create actual useful jobs, except in the realm of getting out of the way of. of entrepreneurs and business people who would create jobs. And, and I give them a fairly good grade on that. I close to an A on that, at least on effort. Let me interrupt. Today there was a report that Romney's people came down to Governor Scott and told him to back off his job creation because it's making his program look bad and Obama look good. Yeah. As a Republican, how do you look at that? How, how do you receive that message? I haven't seen the message. Uh, I had to get up early this morning. I didn't read the report. I did see the headline. I, I'm not sure what that means. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not anything to do with it. Okay. I was just thought it was really strange myself. So, yeah, so on this, those issues, you had some other issues for the state legislature. Uh, so, job creation, we've gone over that. Uh, what were the other ones? Healthcare? You know, of course, Medicare is a, is a federal program, so yeah, you're probably going to Medicaid. Right. Uh, Medicaid, we've done a, a, it doesn't make an A. Let's give them a C. <laughs> Let's give them a C. Uh, one of the troubles with uh, the legislative initiatives, and uh, it uh, it started under a previous governor, but uh, the idea of uh, a lot of ideas were floated into place. You know, we we pushed a lot of the Medicaid care now under managed care. Unfortunately, and I'm sure the doctor is well aware of this. Unfortunately, where that leaves us is that you've taken another uh, 12 to 15 percent off the top for overhead. You've got the governmental overhead to run the Medicaid program, and then you've got this new layer of overhead for the managed care programs. I'm not saying they cannot do some good, but right off the top, we've taken something out for, for, for management here. Uh, a lot of the rhetoric really got away from us. You know, we talked about, you know, empowering these people as, as health care consumers. There's a lot of real on the street problems with that. People on Medicaid uh, are, are not well known for making good decisions. 
just as a group. I'm not saying all of them, but uh, generally you end up impoverished. Uh, you haven't had a lot of experience making good decisions. We talked about health uh, savings accounts. Probably the vast majority of people on Medicaid have never had a savings account of any kind, sometimes not even a checking account. So I think the rhetoric got away from us. He talked about empowering people on Medicaid. Well, the hugest, hugest number one single item in Medicaid is long-term care. He talked about people in nursing homes. How do we empower somebody in a nursing home bed, especially if they're tied to the bed? I guess you can untie them. But that's empowerment. But I think the rhetoric and the sales job got away from us there. Uh, I think a lot of the I think a lot of that was done in order to to sell the idea of managed care as being better than, than, than fee for service Medicaid. I don't know that it is. I'm not saying it's not, but I haven't seen it. You know, we've done we, we've done repeated studies offered by the legislature and some private think tanks to try and prove that there's an improvement in, in patient care with managed care. They, they've never come up with with proof. So I'm I'm quite agnostic on that. So we'll give them a see.